So Indian art and culture are amount of uh, studies cover upon it too. So the way in which we started, we mainly started with the how uh, Indus Valley civilization, a pretty well organized civilization, are in Chi, and how the uh, construction, particularly aiming people, people of life. அவங்களை மட்டும் மேஜராக பேசிச்சு எப்படி அதே டைமில் கான்டெம்பரியாக இருந்த சிவிலைசேஷன்ஸ்லாம் கிங்ஸ் இன் கிங்டம்ஸ் இன் ஒரு மானிமெண்டலாக பார்த்துச்சோ இந்த சிவிலைசேஷன் வந்து பீப்புள் பீப்புளுடைய லிவிங் முக்கியமாக பார்த்துச்சுன்றதை பார்த்தோம் அண்ட் நெக்ஸ்ட் தர் வாஸ் அ டல் ஃபேஸ் இன் இந்தியன் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் ஐ மென் சே கம்ப்ளீட்லி டல் ஃபேஸ் ஃபார் இந்தியா பட் அன் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் வைஸ் இந்தியன் இந்தியா ஃபேஸ் அ டல் ஃபேஸ் because vedic times la perishable materials are follow up on the ivc a follow up on vedic times la perishable materials which are most of the constructions so there was nothing much surviving during that time in the vedic fulla both early vedic as well as later vedic rendu perilume or perusa surviving monuments abdin kadaiyadu and vedic also avoided the contact of gods directly with the people so in a sense now gods nu solradhana i'm saying not the uh, humanitarian presence of gods and then came the ideal change ideological or buddhism to religious concept all over there and that uh, buddhist monks tried to do something new and kind of worship so avanga enna padranga or place of worship maru ona create padranga avanga irukka edathile that was called as chaitya this concept of creation of place of worship a building a structural building was then adopted by hindu hinduism or then what was called as brahmanism so the brahmanism vandha and the man and the construction happened so in the wise the temples both in south india as well as in north india happened but in different time scales so ultimately it culminated to the climax in the 11th century both for south india as well as for north india so climax abindrathu namma enna sollu abindna art and culture la i have been repeatedly saying when something is referred as climax in the subjects like art and culture it means that it was not that adukapra pannave illa abindra artham kedaya and the climax in the period la masterpiece the greatest monumental structure that can be built was achieved so adukku mela endha oru oru greatness la oru blueprint for a creation or oru new modality creation la edhum nadakkala adukapra adhe light oru chinna change panni inoru edathil implement pannaangale thavara even if it is going to be on bigger scale and sheer size the blueprint creation and the end edathil nadandhuchu adha climax appadi nu solluvom idu repeated ah nam sculptures ku paathirukrom pottery ku paathirukrom architectural structures ah paathirukrom ellathirume enga enga cultures climax nadandhuchu paathu and after the 11th century india faced a new religion and that religion is islam so almost the indian rule medieval time abindradala vandha almost it was done by islamic rulers mostly by islamic rulers force we had hindu rulers also like vijayanagara kingdoms and all etc etc so but in the islamic rule during the time la all over india different branches of Uh, islamic groups were there like uh, mughal rule predominantly based in uh, delhi and that uh, had its influence almost most part of india but adhe uh, time provincial la vandu golgumba hyderabad sasaram indha mari edathula chinna chinna provincial level la governments irundanga mughal governments irundanga i mean muslim governments irundanga islamic governments irundanga so they also had their uh, monuments built uh, their uh, their share of monuments so in the vegal almost for 600 700 years ku vandu nammalku indha islamic architecture abindrathu vandu india la predominant irundhuchu okay so fine and in this islamic architecture we have been seeing for the last 2 to 3 classes we have seen how it started with the delhi sultanates who were based in delhi and how it was adhe uh, time la malwa and the mari areas la the provincial governments la eppadi vandu in the architecture grow pannanga apdi paathum and then ultimately the islamic rule vandu was taken over by moguls based in delhi so in the mughal kings were, uh, were highly you know improvised highly you know what to say and great they had a huge share of uh, treasury they had a huge share of land to rule <coughs> and everything because of this their monuments were colossal their monuments were really very really big and very you know uh, what to say artistically masterpieces so adala varusaya nam paathirukku last class la nam vandu we saw how it was initiated the islamic uh, mughal architecture was initiated and then uh, how what are the features basic features of mughal architecture or the thing we saw mostly how they give importance to more tombs and more uh, gardens of the path in fact taj mahal the world celebrated taj mahal is nothing more than a tomb is a place of burial so mughal rules were distinctive features now we we'll see lot of lots of uh, these kinds of tombs and of course most of the muslim rulers almost every muslim ruler had created a city seringla so the major one akbar shahjahan ivangala vand major ah pannirundanga of course i wouldn't say every mughal rulers but the predominant and the golden era of mughal rule at the time most of the rulers tried to create a city so had lot of forts created for their strong rule to happen okay so idhula vand nam earlier 
பாபரை பத்தி பார்த்தோம் ஹவு பாபர் டு கோவர் இந்தியா அண்ட் ஹவு ஹி கேப்சர்டு டெல்லி ruling for not more than 4 years but still in that 4 years itself we created lots of modern lots of basic idea for the forthcoming mogal architecture adala kabuli bag and pandepat and the uh, monument or or important masterpiece and we saw about these things last classes itself and then finally babur was followed by humayun his son humayun was you know, thrown out of his uh, position by shersha sur from uh, sasaram so in the 15 years na rendu perudi in the inter game ஒரு இன்டர்லூட் மாதிரி மாத்தி மாத்தி ஹுமாயூன் சூரோட இருக்கும் பட் சூர் வாஸ் சேஷா சூர் வாஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் அஸ் வெல் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் ஃபார் போத் முகல்ஸ் அஸ் வெல் ஃபார் தி இந்தியன் லேண்ட்ஸ்கேப் எப்படின்னா சேஷா சூர் என்ன அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் லைன்ல பிளான் பண்ணாரோ அதுதான் அக்பர் ரிலேட்டர் ஃபாலோ அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் அப்பேரட்டஸ் was created by Sir Shashur. Likewise, Sir Shashur initiated lots of good projects also, like uh, Delhi, uh, Bombay, sorry, Delhi, Bengal, Grand Trunk Road, a long road bar, that was initiated by Sir Shashur. Okay. Likewise, uh, <coughs> Sir Shashur's creation of one of the you know, masterpieces, we can say this, his own tomb. So, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it has most first kind of an octagonal shape, it was very very grandly sculpted masterpiece, domes were very bigger, and this ultimately was succeeded by bigger most domes, but in the idea of wide domes, the domes were somewhat elongated, so they giving an impression that it was very big dome so in the mari vishayangala happened during the time of sasha and humayun also had his uh, share his storm was one of the most important thing and his delhi delhi sirshashi this was built by sirshahi and uh, that was one of the other uh, feature built by sirsha idala last class le namu paathidom okay so this is humayun tomb so humayun tomb if you look closely it will have, have a close resemblance to taj mahal very much a close resemblance to taj mahal if, if you strip the taj mahal with that uh, minarets that pillars four pillars at the corner that is called those, those are called minarets we have seen that in the definitions alone the last class le paathu for those of the students who have not uh, seen these please go have a look at my earlier class on art and architecture in the definition minarets na enna oru or place ku oru per irukku islamic architecture la i have elaborated those names i cannot repeatedly keep on doing once again for every class so i want you guys to look at the uh, earlier uh, presentations okay so in the minarets on the strip of punt on the basic uh, module or you know the high raised platform la vechi and if it is going to be made of red sandstones and this is how it look so this idea of uma in terms is the basis for many monuments it inspired many monuments further monuments but primarily its influence can be strongly felt in taj mahal okay so fine uh, next uh, we'll be moving to akbar so we closed here the akbar starting la last class la close pannu akbar to say in short was one of the greatest ruler emperor of india there is no doubt about it you cannot take a stand based on religion or not as it is just look at the past rulers of india and you can not deny akbar as a great ruler of course he was one of the somewhat a secular ruler you wouldn't say because i wouldn't say he denounced his religion or he did not put forth this religious uh, thoughts in the governments but he was far more tolerant than the jizya and ramari tax la irukum non muslim subjects ku mela poradala he waved off his wife was jodha akbar uh, she is a uh, hindu and uh, based on her because of her he did a lot of new things to hinduism also for the temple of construction la kuda he would for seen and uh, his idea of he also created a new religion based on, because of this religious tolerance that arrived in him he created a new religion by calling all those uh, religious great leaders and having a discussion based on that discussion he formed his own religion avare avarku religion form pandrar deen ilahi abrint even even though it is his religion avaru uruvaakku religion adu and he is one of the greatest emperor and he had a very huge say on the people and he didn't force anybody to convert to his own religion அந்த ரிலீஜன் பேர் தீன் இலாகி தீன் இலாகிக்கு எந்த வகையான கன்வர்ஷன் பண்ணணும்னு ஸ்ட்ரிக்டா எந்த நார்ம்ஸ் எந்த ரூல்ஸ்மே போடல சோ யூ கேன் சி ஃப்ரம் தேர் இட் செல்ஃப் ஹவ் அக்பர் வாஸ் அண்ட் திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் மென்டாலிட்டி ஆஃப் அக்பர் கேன் பி ரிஃப்ளக்டட் இன் இஸ் மானுமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ ஓகே மீ இட் சி தட் அண்ட் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி கிரேட்னஸ் ஆஃப் அக்பர் இன் த செக்யுலரிசம் எக்ஸெட்ரா எக்ஸெட்ரா தாண்டி ஹி ஹேட் அ வெரி ஹியூஜ் லேண்ட் ரூலிங் தி தி கிளைமேக்ஸ் ஆஃப் முகல் ரூல் வாஸ் அன் அக்பர்னு சொல்லலாம் இந்த மெனை சே கிளைமேக்ஸ் யூ கேன் சே ஒன் திங் it is the time which they were at the peak abdin sollu akbar was that uh, way so for, it is not shah jahan you can think of course you can say that shah jahan's monuments are celebrated monuments paintings and of course 
Shahjagan was celebrated in everything. But more than Shahjagan, it was Akbar who was very great in terms of the extent of the emperor, empire and um, the uh, level in which monuments were created. So, a complete maturity of monuments is there on the chain. So, when you compare Shahjagan, it may be Mughal architecture in the Sulukla, it may be a thought process of the Taj Mughal. So, Taj Mughal is the Shahjagan. We always try to think and formulate our or uh, keep Sajjagan as an ideal piece and compare the other monuments with that. So, that's what we do. Now, in our mentality, the Islamic architecture is the biggest contribution, the biggest masterpiece, the biggest uh, framework of the Taj Mughal. So, in Taj Mughal, we compare the Taj Mughal to the other monuments. So, either it is above or that or below that. There is nothing architecturally above Taj Mughal in terms of elaboration. I can openly say it to them because it was very new in idea. Even for the Mughal architecture itself. You know, LMA complete or white marble printer, very, very, very new idea. But, but, for that to happen, for Sajagan to create such a kind of masterpiece, there were lots of people who were before him who did great works. Like if you take, for example, Uma and Tom would have basic idea of it, the Taj Mahal would have been made itself. So you cannot eliminate the Uma and Uma and contribution of Uma and Tom from the picture. Likewise, Agra, sorry, Agra. So Agra also did a lot of things. So these things were ornamented by Sajagan. So Sajagan had a classic feature of the ruler of the architectural gunnotum. He had a very art-based gunnotum. He wanted more decoration. So he wanted more decoration. So he wanted more decoration. So he wanted more decoration. He wanted more decoration. This is very, you know, tougher for you guys, but it is so easy for us because we can look all their contributions in a single lens. If you know the architecture, painting, our literature, our music, we know it. So now only you are learning. So you cannot, you know, try to have that lens. So you will, of course, get the lens of viewing that emperor slowly, but still, at this point of time, you are very much acquainted with only architecture. So that's why you have an idea. But from the point of view of the emperor, Saja Gaur Ode paintings paathirukum, Saja Gaur Ode architecture paathirukum, Saja Gaur Ode matta contributions paathirukum. When we look at all these things, we can be very sure of one thing. He liked ornamentation very much. Ornamentation very much Saja Gaur liked it. So, this is the style of Akbar Gaur style, Jagangir Gaur style. Saja Gaur Ode ornamentation is not a clear evidence of it. In the miniature paintings, you can use gold frame and try to use gold over there also. So, gold is one of the very issues we live in. Having known the idea of Tanjavar paintings, you guys will ask me that using of gold in a structure and a portrait is not that good, that big thing. So, if you do this, you can do this. This is a Peter Dhirab Dhirab technique. This is a Jagangir introduced to the Jagangir. This technique is very extensive painting. So, if you do the natural painting, if you do the subject, you can do it. And the man of the gold will dominate the painting so that you will not be able to look the original idea. And the Varanjade Patrika Mantika, the man of the decorations are going to be. So that dominated and that of course somewhat destroyed the idea of painting itself. So in the Mari Naraya Vishangalam, and of course, Sajagan did it in his monuments also. And most of the things Sajagan monuments are going to be Vishangalam did not survive today because Adhikapra and our day, parent, our own zips are our day. Aurangzeb bandu was somewhat an astronomer, orang 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 kanjeng pun sangat memang. So, ini adalah tempat yang strip pun ada mister. Alat ini rendah, fill pun ada gold dulu, soran dia degan ada memang pun ada mister. So, we look at those things in today's class. So, Akbar made Agra a seat of power. Okay, so that was because of the idea of ini kemarin itu Humayun Shahshah orang ini terus. Jadi, ada nol anda orang main cerita orang ini. So, orang directly Delhi keluar bandar, enggak pada itu pergi mana orang bayam orang keluar orang ini. So, orang Akbar orang Agra seat of power apa itu pun ada. His architecture reflects a blend of Hindu and Islamic creations. So you can see that. So Agra Fort, made of red sandstone, one of the biggest monuments. The red sandstone, it, it, it started evolving. Okay. On the banks of river Emuna, began in 1565 and completed in 1574. Almost within a matter of nine years, they completed it. Well, how was it possible? If we say that, we can say that we have the monuments in 30-40 years. We can say that we have the monuments in 30-40. How was that the Mughal Emperor were able to achieve such great monuments with not more than within a 10 years period? That is because the Mughal monuments were structural mostly and not decorative. Structural and decorative is a difference. If you look at Hindu or Hindu Islam, Hindu concept or Temple concept, there are sculptures. 
ஸ்மால் ஸ்கல்ப்சர் மே பி வெரி ஸ்மால் பட் அது வந்து ஒரு பிரிக் சைஸ் தான் இருக்கும் ஸோ ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் காம் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் ஆஃப் தட் ஸ்கல்ப்சர் பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒண்ணு பெருசா கிடையாது ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்னா ஒரு பில்டிங்கோட சைஸ்ல இந்த ஒரு ஸ்கல்ப்சருடைய கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் அப்படின்னு பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு செங்கல் அளவு தான் இருக்கும் சரிங்களா பட் ஆனா அந்த தட் ஒன் பிரிக் பீப்புள் ஹாவ் டு ஸ்பெண்ட் லாட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஒர்க்கிங் ஹவர்ஸ் ஸோ கேன் யூ கேன் யூ கெட் இட் ஸோ ஸ்கல்ப்சர்ன்றது ஒரு ஸ்ட்ரக்சரல் காம்பர்ன்ற பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு பிளாக் ஆஃப் ராக் ஸோ வெறும் ஒரு பிளாக் ஆஃப் ராக்கை தூக்கி வச்சு அடுத்த பிளாக் ஆஃப் ராக்கை ராக்கை தூக்கி வைக்கிறதுக்கு உங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப நாள் போகல பட் இப்போ நீங்க தூக்கி வைக்கிற ஒரு ஒரு பிளாக் ஆஃப் ராக்கு யூ ஹவ் டு கார்வ் இட் யூ ஹவ் டு டூ சம்திங் அப்படின்னா ஃபார் எவ்ரி பிளாக் ஆஃப் ராக் யூ பிளேஸ் இட் யூ ஹவ் டு ஸ்பெண்ட் சம் ஒர்க் ரைட் திஸ் இஸ் ஒய் இந்து மானிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டட் ஸ்லோலி பிகாஸ் இந்து மானிமெண்ட்ஸ் வேர் காம்பினேஷன் ஆஃப் போத் ஆர்கிடெக்சரல் அண்ட் ஸ்கல்ச்சரல் பீசஸ் ஸோ இதனால பட் மோஸ்ட்லி முதல் மானியமெண்ட்ஸ் எக்ஸப்ட் தட் அப் பீத்ர தீரா இந்த மாதிரி டெக்னிக்ஸ் தவிர மீது எல்லாமே வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ல இருக்கும் ஸோ ஆஸ் அண்ட் வெண்டே கீப் அண்ட் பிளாக் கீப் த பிளாக் அப் 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 தி ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ரைசஸ் ஓகே அண்ட் பேரலி தேர் வாஸ் ஆல்சோ ஒர்க்கிங் ஆன் பீத்ர தீரா எக்ஸெட்ரா எக்ஸெட்ரா அண்ட் ஆஃப் கோர்ஸ் த டைம் ஆல்சோ ஆல்மோஸ்ட் அடுத்த ஒரு ஒரு ஜென்ரேஷன் அடுத்த ஜென்ரேஷன் வரக்குள்ள நமக்கு நிறைய அட்வான்ஸ் பண்ண நடக்கும் இவங்க ஆல்மோஸ்ட் த்ரீ ஹண்ட்ரட் ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் இயர்ஸ் கழிச்சு தான் வராங்க அந்த ரூலர்ஸ்க்கு அப்புறம் ஸோ வாட் ஆல் ஐடியாஸ் வாட் ஆல் சொஃபிஸ்டிகேஷன்ஸ் கூட வர விட் ஆன் த சேம் and uh, what all the knowledge that these architects would have gathered of course initially la pathina the mughal rulers when they employed the islamic rulers employed their uh, um, no the, the persian architects and employed them but over a period of time local architects were fused with that idea and they started creating these monuments okay la so agra fort made of red sandstone on the banks of river yamuna began in uh, 1565 and completed in 1574 the city of fatehpur 60 was founded as a token of gratitude to say Sheikh Salim Chisti, who had foretold that Akbar would have three sons who would survive after this, after the sad demise of many children in the infancy. So, Akbar came to the house of Akbar, and he came to the house of Akbar, and he came to the house of Akbar. So, that's why he came to the house of Akbar, and he came to the house of Akbar. He came to the house of Akbar, and he came to the house of Akbar, and he came to the house. and of course this city faced lot of problems also there was another uh, another uh, uh, saint who told who foretold that he will abandon the city as early as possible yen na fatehpur sikri ki pathina ungalku vandu water problem dramatic water problem or not more than 5 years agar agbar stayed in that fatehpur sikri so water problem irukradhanal he had to abandon the city and move and the mari nare hampi kuda pathina water problem face pannanga indha mari nare cities face pannanga appa constructed cities only monuments were taken to account not the usual way in which it is used so inik andha mari city enga nadakudunu pathinga appadina shimla mari cities nadandathu ipo nammalku shimla la kelvi pottirupinga neenga or nalla or tourist place appadina mari but shimla is facing a acute water shortage it's a hilly station the water needs to be from from the ground kira rendu mala malai kira rendu and the uh, you know enormous outpouring of tourists and local populations hotel is etc etc is having a huge toll so there is no not much water available in shimla now indha mari or idha vida or crude acute water shortage shortage la vandu fatehpur sikri face panuchu okay so now we are coming back to mughal architects of akbar this is a red fort in agra are called as agra fort agra fort or red fort in agra anyway we can use but id edukku appadina inda monuments mughal monuments la neenga oru vishayam note pannalam ore perla rendu edathil irukum red fort delhi red fort agra okay so this is red fort agra or agra fort so epdi delhi fort delhi fort nu kupidvinga illa red fort nu kupidvinga adhe maari edukkunga and uh, more than the red fort of delhi agra fort is far more uh, you know stronger and formidable in terms of view and uh, Uh, things but the scale is ultimately the delhi fort that is bigger okay right uh, so these are the forts you can see how beautiful this white tiling of um, things were used in the our decoration was achieved and structural components were achieved and brilliant right so mughal architecture fatehpur city was begun in 1567 and completed in 1574 the same year in which the fort of agra was completed fatehpur city was a town planned as an administrative unit consisting of public buildings as well as private residences in the close proximity the city is a modest township consisting of halls palaces offices gardens pleasure resorts baths mosques and tombs so in a sense it was a modest township or chinna township maari indupidranga halls palaces offices gardens etc etc it was mostly for public administration okay almost all these structures are based on trabita constructions what is trabita constructions so idhu munadi nam paathadena arch lintel trabita abindra maari nam paathom okay sorry lintel beam and trabita constructions so idhu ellame the dome and the maari vishayangala ulla vandirchu okay prominent structures bulandarwasa panch mahal dargah of salim chisti 
Divani Kaz, Divani Am, Jodha Bhai Palace, Jama Masjid, Ibadat Kana. So these are the most prominent structures inside the Agra Fort. Okay. Sorry, Fatehpur Sikri. So this is Fatehpur Sikri, Buland Darwasa. So the Fatehpur Sikri entered the Uru and the Uru entry was a township, a more minimal size township. In the Kitra Maria and Nikon, the Persa are controlled. For a town center, for a town level, and Rudur, not more than one acre number of Solila. And the other one is the structures like a circle. So Fatehpur Sikri, Buland Darwasa. Buland Darwasa is one of the you know, biggest dome entry. There is a half dome going there. If you see, look closely, you can see inside there is a half dome. There is actually a gateway. And the city is a very good thing. Okay. So, this is the entry of the from the inside. Punch Magal. So, Punch Magal is high and the most impressive structure called the palace of five stories with open terrace on each story. So, this is the building and the floor. Five floors are there. Now you can imagine how complex it was. In fact, uh, people belong to Chennai will know it. People belong to Tamil Nadu. We have to go to the highest building in the world. We have to go to the highest building in the world. In the Mughal times, we have almost 300 to 400 years back. We have to go to the back. You can imagine how you know, that uh, tiring was placed. Of course, Hindu temples were tiring in the tiring place, but structurally, overall movement came in the tiring level, terrace based in the structures. So, based on the Hindu system of Trabita structures consisting of pillared veranda, arcuate, and brackets. So, Trabita is a Hindu system of Trabita and column with the Malor beam upon in the Mari Vishetalada on the Paninal. Okay, so that is very new and that is very coming back of the old ideas of Binsolom. Consisting of pillared verandas. So, there was pillared verandas. Ultimate and brackets. Brackets are in the structure the entrance layer, exit layer. This normal arch is used for a floor curved like the other. Well, it will be like a C inverted C model. But arcuates are in the brackets are in the curly bracket. It will be in that sense. The view part will be like a curly bracket. So in the model. Right? So build on the pattern of Buddhist Vihara is the topmost doomed pavilion purposely thrown out of the center that uh, crowns the entire building. <laughs> and the tower was perhaps used for recreation by emperor and the members of royal also. So this is the Panchmaga. Okay, so you can see. So beams, uh, columns, which are not arches, side and pavilions, etc. Mala veranda, etc. projections and slowly it is receding and giving open space also. Okay, so here is open sky, here is open sky, but at the same time, it will be rising in floors. In the top structures, it is somewhat out of center, but because there is a staircase outside. But it looks, mostly this structure would have been used by the emperor and the family members for recreational purposes. Okay. So next is Dargav Chalim Shasti. This is also constructed by Akbar. So our and the same sonar, our guy constructed And this is one of the first monument to enclose mostly in white marbles. Okay. And of course, either the later part, but of course, this monument is not that, uh, you know, what to say, um, so much decorative as like what Shah Jagan did. Okay. Next is Divani Kas, a complex structure also known as the Hall of Private Audience. So, Divani Am, Divani Kas, and Renter in the Chi, Akbar. Divani Am is a place where in which he had the public audience. So, either one or a UPSC question. Okay. Divani Arm is a place where in which he had the public audience or mass number of gathering that is called Divani Arm. Well, Divani Kaas is nothing but a place of private audience. Okay. It is a square chamber with three openings on each side. Three openings on each side. One side leaves, moon opening and a richly carved column in the center supporting a magnificent floral shaped capital. Floral shaped capital through the ventilation is provided by placing on all such perforated windows opposite each other on every wall. The charming balcony supported by a circular top capital runs around the hall. Whole length of the four sides of the first floor level supported by brackets. Mm -hmm. It is believed that the central palace was occupied by the emperor's throne while his ministers sat at the corners or peripheral passages. So this is Siva, uh, Divani Kas. So you can see how it is three entries, but in a real entry is only one. But three entryways. But if you go for the first floor, there is three entryways. Okay. And uh, though, uh, though ventilation is provided by placing on all sets of perforated windows opposite each other on every wall. So if you look closely, perforated windows. Perforated, you know, water port window. 
ஒரு ஜாலி ஒர்க் மாதிரி பண்ணி ஜாலி ஒர்க்ல ஓட்டர் இருக்குது பாத்தீங்களா அதுதான் பர்ஃபரேட் விண்டோ ஓகே சார்மிங் பால்கனி சப்போர்ட் பை சர்க்கிள் ஸ்டாப் கேபிட்டல் ரன் அரவுண்ட் தி ஹால் ஹோல் லெந்த் ஆஃப் தி ஃபோர் சைட்ஸ் ஆன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃப்ளோர் சப்போர்ட்டட் பை பிராக்கெட்ஸ் இஃப் யூ சி தேர் இஸ் எ பிராக்கெட் பாத்தீங்களா இதுதான் பிராக்கெட் இப்படி சப்போர்ட் பண்ணது பாத்தீங்களா ஒரு உடன் காவிங் மாதிரி அதுதான் பிராக்கெட் இந்த இடத்துல சப்போர்ட் பண்ணது பாத்தீங்களா இது வந்து கேரளா ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ரொம்ப பாரமெண்டா நம்ம பாப்போம் இது கிட்டத்தட்ட கேண்டல் ஒரு மெக்கானிசம் யூஸ் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்குது ஓகே சோ தேர் ஆர் ஃபோர் கேபிடல்ஸ் தட் பீஸ் ஆர் ரிச்லி பியூஸ் அண்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃப்ளோர் இஸ் ஹேவிங் பிராக்கெட்டட் வால்ஸ் ஓகே இட் இஸ் பிலீவ் தட் தி சென்ட்ரல் பாலஸ் வாஸ் ஆக்குபைட் பை எம்பரர்ஸ் த்ரோன் வைல் இஸ் मिनिस्टर சேட் ஆன் தி கார்னர்ஸ் ஆன் தி பெரிஃபெரல் பாசேஜ் சோ இந்த சென்டர் இந்த நான்கு வழியில இருக்குதுல சென்ட்ரல்ல தி मिनिस्टर தி எம்பரர் சேட் அண்ட் ஃபோர் பெரிஃபெரல் பாசேஜ்ஸ் த்ரூ திஸ் திங் தி मिनिस्टर சேட் அண்ட் ஓகே சோ திஸ் இஸ் ஜோதாபாய்ஸ் பாலஸ் ஜோதாபாய் யார் அப்படினா Jodhavai was the queen of, one of the queen of Akbar. And in some sense it is believed that it is uh, Jodhavai was his true love. I will tell you about that. Okay. So Jodhavai is, uh, Akbar created a, um, a palace that is very known for Jodhavai. And of course introduced or brought in certain elements of Rajput ideas into Jodhavai. Like for example in the Chattri is not a majorly Rajput idea. That is why you know mostly it will be leaning towards the Rajput idea completely. Okay. Fine. Next is Jagangir. Mughal architecture. So the contribution of Jagangir is majorly with regard to Peter Dura. Okay. Peter Dura is already in the last class. You can see the wall. You can see the floral designs made of semi-precious stones. You can see the floral designs. கல் எடுத்துப்பாங்க அந்த கல்ல வந்து ஒரு சின்ன காவிங் மாதிரி பண்ணிட்டு ஃபீல் தட் காவிங் வித் கோல்ட் அண்ட் அதர் பிரஷியஸ் மெட்டல்ஸ் அண்ட் ஸ்டோன்ஸ் இட் வில் பிளேஸ் அண்ட் ஃபைனல் ப்ராடக்ட் வில் பி அசேஃப் லைக் தட் அந்த மொத்த ஸ்டோனுமே ஒரே இதுல மேக்க வச்சு அதனால அந்த இன்லே பண்ண அந்த ஸ்டோன்ஸும் மெட்டல்ஸும் வெளியே தெரியாத அளவுக்கு ஒரே லெவல்ல இருக்கிற மாதிரி பண்ணுவாங்க சோ திஸ் வாஸ் பீட்ரு டூரா திஸ் டெக்னிக் ஆஃப் கோர்ஸ் வாஸ் நாட் கம்ப்ளீட்லி டிஸ்கவர்ட் பை ஜாங் இட் வாஸ் ஃப்ரம் அவுட் சைட் இன்ஃபுளுன்ஸ் நீங்க ரஷ்யா அது மாதிரி சாரி போஷியா அந்த மாதிரி இடத்துல இருந்தா இந்த ஐடியா இருந்துச்சு அதை தான் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணாங்க பட் ஆஸ் வெல் முகல் மான்யூமெண்ட் அண்ட் இஸ்லாமிக் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் இஸ் கன்சர்ன் இட் வாஸ் ஜகாங்கீர் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் திஸ் திங் பட் இந்த பீத்ரதீர ஒன் தோ ஜகாங்கீர் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் இட் வாஸ் ஷாஜகான் உட் எக்ஸ்டென்சிவ்லி மேட் யூஸ் ஆஃப் இட் அண்ட் த க்ளோரி ஆஃப் பீத்ரதீர கேன் பி வெரி மச் சீன் இன் தி தாஜ்மஹால் ஓகே இன்ட்ரடியூஸ்ட் பீத்ரதீர டெக்கரேட்டிங் த வால்ஸ் வித் ஃப்ளோரல் டிசைன்ஸ் மேட் ஆஃப் செமி பிரஷியஸ் ஸ்டோன்ஸ் வாஸ் ஸ்டார்டட் இன் திஸ் ரெயின் ascribed to shalim uh, shalimar bagh on the banks of dal lake in kashmir so we already said mughals vandu or the bagh gardens mel or periya affection irukku apdi they would have created lots of gardens char bagh and or style architecturally infused but particularly monuments like kumayun tomb um, uh, taj mahal all these things was placed in the middle of a garden with four waves creating a four garden type of thing okay so garden nadu la place pannuvanga but naal waves kudukona adukku apdi indha mari kudukkula the garden completely got divided into four things and it was called as char bagh okay built akbar storm but sikandari sikandar uh, sikandara near agra agra which was completed in 1613 jagangir storm but chadira near lahore built by his wife noor mahal he was he also built a moti masjid and lahore uh, at his own uh, and his own muslim at chagadra so he started as muslim but it was completed by noor mahal of course how can you complete without the emperor being dead so bashar started in chadara or lahore by noor mughal <coughs> or noor jagan and finally it was uh, completed by his wife he built a moti masjid in lahore of course na already sonna mudha ungalku nareya moti masjid jama masjid la ore perla nareya irukum nu nambara and avargal inge uruk jagangir also had a moti masjid to his credit and one other thing about jagangir is uh, uh, his wife noor jagan okay noor jagan oda name e ondoru or beautiful name and uh, she had an habit so called waving to the audience adha veliya vandha balcony la ninna avangala janangala paathittu kai asikiradhu it was called as jaroki darshan jaroki darshan na balcony la kai asikiradhu so you can see how architectural compound was placed so masajagan katna sorry jagangir katna nare monuments la inda jaroki darshan kaga balcony is somewhat extended and somewhat projecting outside more than what was present in akbar this ultimately was majorly aimed because in the habit of nurjagan would have influence abindra namma solranga okay So this is uh, Jagangir's major contribution, Shalimar Bagh on the banks of Dal Lake in Kashmir. This is a functional garden even till, uh, till today. Okay. Right. Akbar Storm at Shikandri near Agra. So this is the first time of Minarets, this is the grand rise of the Minarets. So this is the first time of Minarets, but now you can see Minarets as if having a look. There is some what you can find it in Shalimar Bagh on the banks of Dal Lake in Kashmir. So this is the first time of Minarets. Taj Mahal itself. So this is one thing, and this place is also extensively white marbles. 
were somewhat fused with the red sandstones and used for ex elaborate uh, you know um, decorations okay so this is motif was this at lagur so once again a white mar- marble monument so idella i peer take over panna aarambikkudu okay not the taj mahal taj mahal is the only completely white mar- monuments but mar- taj mahal infused all these idea and brought something new idu humayun la irundhu meetradira technique la irundhu white marble based architecture la ellathume fuse panni the grandness was achieved by using by using all these ideas together in taj mahal so this is moti masjid that lagur built by jahangir in this own musoli mat shadara lagur if you look closely jagangiruday monuments la in the minaret side minarets la ipo romba rise a varumichu idhukku munadi nama paatha akbar la paathina minarets undu akbar la mostly or hindu influence irukra maari irukum maybe be on the prata and the beam lintel style irukra maari irukum and why in this case it will be arches marudi kripu vandu so ipo da ungalku undu puri aarambikku oru oru style compare pannina da ungala adu pannu no matter how beautifully i say it no matter what i do it நீங்க வந்து இந்த இந்த மாநிலமெண்ட் ரன் த்ரூ பிக்சர்ஸ்ல ரன் த்ரூ எடுத்து கம்பேர் பண்ணீங்கன்னா உங்களுக்கு நல்ல சில விஷயங்கள் புரிய ஆரம்பிக்கும் யாரா என்னென்ன ஸ்டைல் எப்படி எப்படி பண்ணிருக்கிறாங்க அப்படின்ட்டு ஜஹாங்கிர் ஃபாலோட அக்பர் அக்பர் வந்து கொஞ்சம் இஸ்லாமிக் பீச்சர்ஸ் கொஞ்சம் டவுன் டவுன் பண்ணி இந்துசம் பீச்சர்ஸ் உள்ள எடுத்துருந்தார் லைக் பீம் அண்ட் காலம் இதுலயும் ஒரு பெரிய பிராக்கெட் இந்த பிராக்கெட்டோட கேர்ல் வாஸ் மோர் ஐடென்டிஃபை வித் இந்து டெம்பிள்ஸ் அண்ட் ராஜ்பூட் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் பட் அக்பர் பிராட் இட் இன் சைட் பிராக்கெட்ஸ் எல்லாம் சைட்ல இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணா அது ஒரு இம்பார்ட்டன் பீச்சர் இதெல்லாம் அக்பர் பண்ணிருந்தோம் அவர் ஃபாலோ பண்ண ஜகாங்கிர் வில் பி டேக்கிங் இட் பேக் தி ஒரிஜினல் ஐடியா அந்த ஆர்ச்சஸ் அப்படின்றதுல பியூரா யூஸ் பண்ண ஆரம்பிப்பாரு அண்ட் இன் அடிஷன் டு தட் ஒரிஜினல் ஐடியால இவ்வளவு லெவலுக்கு மினாரட்ஸ் இல்லாது இன்ஃபேக்ட் உமாயம் டாம்லாம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா அக்பர் குமார் உமாயம் டாம்லாம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா உங்களுக்கு மினாரட்ஸ் இருக்காது ஜகாங்கிர் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் மினாரட்ஸ் டு பிகர் எக்ஸ்டென்ட் ஜகாங்கிர மேஜர் கான்ஸ்டியூஷன் ரீஇன்ட்ரடியூசிங் ஆர் மேக்கிங் த மினாரட்ஸ் பிகர் சோ அதுக்காக மினாரட்ஸ்க்கு முன்னாடி இல்லவே இல்லையா இருக்கு புதுப்பினாலே ஒரு மினார் தான் புதுப்பினாலே இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு டவர் தான் சரிங்களா So these minarets were found that time itself. But uh, Jagangir reintroduced and fused it with the monument. Okay, la. So this was highly, you can find, in, if in the monument to the Nadu, you can find the Umayn Tamathik, you can find the Akbar, you can find the Umayn Tamathik, you can find the Umayn Tamathik, you can find the Umayn Tamathik, it is what you can find as a Taj Mahal idea. Okay, la. So in the Mari, you can fuse it in the Mari time. La. So next is Mughal architecture by Sadhya Khan. He erected the most romantic building. Taj Mahal, the tomb of his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Taj Mahal is a square building, square tomb built on a raised tent, a terrace. So, a terrace put around, that's why it's a square building built around, with a graceful tall minarets at its four corners. As in Urmayam's tomb, the tomb chamber is octagonal, with subsidiary chambers at the angles. So, overall building square, but in a tomb's chamber, it's octagonal. So, it gives a different orientation. With subsidiary chambers at the angles, The dome is surmounted by a graceful dome, double dome, and made of, uh, and made of white marble. So, double dome is a double dome, and there is a double dome. So, double dome is the major component. This was found from the time of, number, already in the provincial architecture, in the Gold Gumbas, at that time, the double dome was the same. Lodi was the one who first introduced the idea of double domes. Okay? This uh, substitution of red sandstones. So, earlier, you know, the red sandstones was a major role to play. Pun. now it was white marbles that played the major role there is a profuse carvings and beautiful inlay works with precious multicolored stones pitra diva in its floral as well as and arabesque pattern so idu varla vandu jali works la vandu major concentration achcha inga vandu pitra diva technique romba concentration irukku and the pitra diva technique also the level floor la use panna aarambichaanga earlier pathina ungalku floor la pesa use panni irukka maatanga right the walls la irukra the tiling la da vandu pitra diva use panna inga floor la panna aarambichaanga and arabesque pattern and the vegetal pattern was created Okay, that was also majorly found. In fact, in the Arabesque pattern, they use these scripts from the Quran itself. And the language, the Quran language, the scripts, they used for decorations. Inscriptions in black marble, delicate tessarized and trellis works are executed superbly against the background of white marble. So, use, they use the what? Black marbles also. In Galam Bhatina, the decorations are black marbles. So, this is what? So, now on the bottom, on the top of the bottom, so base. Actually, to say the truth, the base of Taj Mahal is not that uh, strong. There are certain recent reports being saying that the Taj Mahal's base may be sinking due to the, um, some environmental problems. That's the general reason I've been talking about. In the base, every construct is going to be a platform, a stage. And the stage is an ebony tree. It's not completely made of uh, cement or concrete as what you see. It is made of wood base. 
லெபோரட்டரியில ஃபுல்லா கம்ப்ளீட்டா போட்டுட்டு அதை வந்து பைனிங் மாதிரி ஒரு மாதிரி பண்ணிட்டு அந்த இதுல ஒரு ஸ்ட்ரா ஒரு ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் கிரியேட் பண்ணாங்க அதுக்கு மேல தான் அந்த மானிமெண்ட் ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ணி வைக்கிறாங்க இந்த லெபோரட்டரி வந்து வாட்டர் இன்ஃபுளுன்ஸ் தான் ஸ்ட்ராங்கா இருக்கும் So as because of this uh, water inflow to this monument was cut off, Yamuna tree in the water inflow was cut off, and there is a weakness in the tree, and there is a weakness in the tree, and there is a somewhat tilt that can be noted, and there is a lot of research that has been found. Okay, so base, right? And next is Dadu decorated frame with Pithradira. So this is a Dadu, and it is a frame, entry frame, that is decorated. And the front layer is a post-marked frame, okay? So, uh, finial, topmost component, ornamental treatment, treatment uh, terminating part. And if you look closely, there is an inverted lotus kind of idea. There is, uh, there was a component from Hinduism, but it was used. Lotus decoration. The lotus is the prominent Hindu symbol used in Taj Mahal. Onion dome, or inverted dome. And if you see, in the Badiya, rice pannu with dome mark. And uh, as you go into, there will be another dome also here, but it will not be visible from the outset. So, that is what it is called as double dome. Next is Chatri, a domed and a columned kiosk. So, it's already shown in the original review point of the market. This is an important feature that was added from Rajput uh, uh, architecture. Okay. So, drum, cylindrical base of on and down. So, if you put it here, it's the dome. So, which means this drum is where, so in the drum, there is no dome. Okay. So, uh, Guldastha are tall decorative spires. There are placed in the four corners. Guldastha are tall decorative spires. And then um, minarets, 40 meter tall cylindrical columns with beveled angles. Okay, so at the corner, right? <clears throat> and arch, also called as Pishtak. So the other name for arch is Pishtak. This arch is Pishtak. Calligraphy on the large Pishtak. So in the over, outer side, there is a huge calligraphy design that was made and other decorated frameworks. So these are the compass, sorry, I missed the spandrel. Spandrel space between an arch and a rectangular enclosure. So if you look closely, this thing, this is the rectangular enclosure, this is the arch. In the space, in the curving space, in the space, this is the space, this is the spandrel. Okay, fine. So that is about the Sajagan Staj Mughal intrinsic features. So Mughal architecture of Sajagan. Sajagan also contributed a number of elegant, lavishly decorated buildings. Kas Mughal, Diwani Kas, Moshi Masjid, Jamma Masjid, etc. and uh, mostly in delhi built jama masjid in uh, 19 in 1648 in the honor of his daughter jagannara begum in wazir khan's mosque in lahore 1634 okay <clears throat> in 1638 sajid khan shifted his capital from agra to delhi he was a complete shift of capital from agra to delhi happens and laid the foundation of sajidanabad the seventh city of delhi containing uh, containing the his, uh, his famous citadel the red fort which was begun in 1639 and completed after 9 years. So if you look closely, it was Sajagans Delhi, that what we call as Old Delhi and what was predominantly used till the independence, majorly. So the Red Fort of Indra Yadam Patina is the Old Delhi, or where Sajagans created Sajaganabad. So in the Delhi, the lieutenant's architecture, Rising Hill construct Pandra Varlum, Rising Hill, in the Rastra Bodhan Bhavan construct Pandra Varlum, in the major usage of the ship. So, one of the Delhi which had, of the seven Delhis, which had most important, most elaborate use was this Delhi. Okay. Red Fort is a irregular octagon with its walls, gates and a few other structures constructed in a red sandstones and marble used for the palaces. Okay. Once again, guys. Marble used for the palace. It consists of Divani arm containing the marble canopy ornamented with uh, beautiful planets of Pitra Dira work showing a few paintings. So this is Jamma Malasi the Dagra by Sajagan. Okay. So on the element used for the Barbar and the Sharjah the element club. Okay. This is Sajagan Abad or where you find uh, the red fort. Or a half octagon or a paadi part of Ramar Rukum. Okay. And this is the red fort Delhi. The entry place. In the independence day, the flag rise for the in the front of the Ramar Rukum. And this is the top view of Delhi. So, after another path, the structure is created. 
and this is kasmahal built by uh, sajalan so next is divani kas in red fort is a highly ornamented pillar hall with the flat ceiling supported on engraved arches its pillars contain spitrinjal ornamentation and the upper portion was originally gilded gilded and painted so the divani kas abindrathu nam already solluka divani am divani kas irukum divani am na enna divani am is a place of public audience divani kas is a place of private audience so the mari sajadan katta red fort liye in the mari divani kas abindra oru monument irundhuchu so, or place for private audience irundhuchu and the place of private audience la upper portion was originally gilded and painted so nare gold la use pannadhu it is also said that its marble dais once supported the famous peacock throne so sajadan oru na famous contributions la kohinu diamond taj mahal etc and there was something called peacock throne so peacock throne appadina or mail oru or complete structure or mail mari ஒரு ஒரு சீட் இருந்தாங்க Walls of this marble palace is ascribed with famous couplets claiming that if there are, there be a paradise on earth it is this it is this it is this so on the mar rukum right deva this is divani kas right where private discussions from the, with the emperor used to happen the long constructing magnificent buildings came to an end and abruptly with the last of the great moguls emperor aurangzeb so of course adukaga moguls kidukapra aurangzeb kapra emperors illa ana irukraanga but it was during the time of aurangzeb that the biggest monuments magnificent monuments building ellame construction or abrupt end varum ena idhukku munadi nama paatha ella roads la or slow pace la dhaan the end varum so climax achieve panni paadu adukapra vandha kings vandha avungalude tomb la or chinna monument illa vera or idea eduthu vandirupaanga but it was during the aurangzeb time the mughal empire itself was a lot of complete changes <laughs> you know it was not because of the funds or because of the other things it was because of the emperor's original character itself in the emperor aurangzeb epdina or or fakir mari solvanga avaru vandu or saapradhukku enna panuvaru avaru eludhana quran la vittu adula vara kaasa da saapanum appadina mari yosippar so you know he felt everything is every kind of spending as a kind of for an unwanted thing or luxurious thing appadina mari so what it was he mostly he uh, He avoided those kind of spendings. So, on the military scale, down, actually, a lot of things happened. Monuments started uh, going, you know, not being constructed. The paintings, painters, are there. Among them, among them, they were not there. So, of course, one other good thing is that on the miniature paintings, they pop up. In the Mughal court, they dispose of the paintings. The Pakistani paintings or Rajput paintings for basis of farm work. Now, once again, they will be employed by small governments, by small businessmen. So, in that way, the miniature paintings would have once again raised it. But as far as the Aurangzeb is concerned, he was the one who was responsible for the decline of architecture. Now, that's not the architecture; the empire itself. Here now, Aurangzeb came from the British prominent to take over from the Mughal ruler. If at all there was one emperor, emperor, uh, emperor who had the ability to turn things, it was Aurangzeb. But Aurangzeb time of Feda Varam, which is the Mughal emperor, would have completely vanished off the uh, thing. Okay, so the built up Bibi Ki Magbara, tomb of his wife Begum Rabina. Uh, Rabia Durani, a poor replica of Taj Mahal. So, this is all about the thing. Taj Mahal is all the glorious people who have created a monument. That's why it's all about the thing. This is BBK Magbara. So, okay. I'll show the comparison. So, this is Taj Mahal. This is BBK Magbara. Okay. BBK Magbara is all about அந்த தாஜ்மஹால் இருக்கிற அந்த பேசிக் ஆப்டகல் எலிமெண்ட்ல ஒரு ஸ்கொயர் கேரக்டர் வச்சு நிறைய சத்தி எக்ஸ்ட்ரா காம்போனட்ஸ் எல்லாம் ஸ்கிரிப்ட் அவுட் ஸ்கிரிப்ட் அவுட் பண்ணிட்டு ஒரு மானியமெண்ட் கிரியேட் பண்ண எப்படி இருக்குமோ அதுதான் சோ பிபிகே மக்பரா இஸ் இன் மகாராஷ்டிரா அண்ட் நாட் ஆஸ் யூ ஹைபோதைஸ் இன் டெல்லி அண்ட் மகாராஷ்டிரால வந்து அவங்க செட் லாட் ஆஃப் திங்ஸ் ஹி ஸ்டேட் ஓவர் தேர் बिकॉज இவர் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி ஆஃப்டர் பிகம் बिफोर बिकமிங் தி கவர்னர் தி எம்பயர் ஆஃப் முகல் கிங்டம் முகல் எம்பயர் ஹி வாஸ் வர்க்கிங் அஸ் கவர்னர் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி கவர்னர்ஸ் ஆஃப் டெக்கான் So, that's why he was affectionation towards Dekhan was very high and he created a city also there called Aurangabad. Okay. And the Aurangabad is a monument. In the monument, you can see the Vishwanandika Pakrana, Dhoni or Movie, that's why you can see the Kamsirapan. Okay. 
ஸோ இந்த மெடிவல் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் அதர் தேன் தி இந்து இஸ்லாமிக் ஸ்டைல்ஸ் என்னென்ன அப்படின்னு பாத்தீங்க அப்படின்னா அண்ட் வித் தட் வித் அவுட் வில் க்ளோஸ் தி ஐடியா ஆஃப் இஸ்லா முகல் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் டு இந்தோ இஸ்லாமிக் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் ஸோ அட் சேம் டைம் தர் அதர் மெடிவல் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் தட் இஸ் நாட் இந்தோ இஸ்லாமிக் இஸ்லாமிக் ஸோ தட் அதுல என்னன்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வில் சி ராஜ்புட் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் ராஜ்புட்ஸ் பில்ட் அஸ் இன்னர் சிட்டாடல் சரௌண்டட் பை ராஜ்புட் பேலசஸ் built as inner citadel surrounded by city and enclosed by fortified walls as a chatish Chit- chitragarg and jaisalmer so rajput enna pannirukanga na avanga palace sutti city construct pannirukanga this will be other way in other places so it will be an inner citadel or nalla closed square mar irukku and even then the even though it was constructed in the middle of the city it was still more fortified okay some forts such as those of bharat uh, bharatpur and deep were protected by wide uh, ditched filled with water surrounded by surrounding the fort so central motto lamma city central motto the fort construct pannama they also built a uh, you know kind of a ditch or sutti or power part mari construct panni adha water fill panni vechitaanga so these things were done to improve the safety of the uh, palaces the reason is mughal empire contemporary on the time of the mughal empire vandu romba the mari attacks na they made it under so they want to avoid the attacks and they want to make the fort stronger and more you know, Uh, giving uh, some protection so adanal indha mari chella nariya protective measures implement panna aarambichaan jai salwar bekana jodhpur udaipur kota palace built approximately 17th century to the early 18th century bekana was enclosed by 5.63 km long stone wall made of rich pink sandstone with five gates and three sorry guys and three salipo saliports The Jodhpur fortress dominates the city which is surrounded by a huge wall nearly 9.5 km long with 101 bastions. Megragad fort stands on a cliff with a sheer drop of over 36 meters. So you can see all these things and all these forts they were, they were some way or the other trying to introduce the secure features. So Bikan Aglapati is 5.63 km long for a stone wall. It's a neat turn or a stone wall with five gates and three sally points. See three meeting points. Jodhpur fort the dominant, so, uh, city, which is surrounded by a huge wall, nearly 9.5 km long. So, the Jodhpur fort was with 9.5 km long per wall with one out one best in best in the occupying fort from where you can attack something. So, Megra fort, this is a cliff on Malamale, and the Malamale is on the other side you can access. The other side is a sheer drop, or a, or a steep drop, 36 meters to a steep drop. So, these things were introduced to create a kind of... Uh, security so uh, man mandir in rajput the largest palace in gwalior was built by raja man singh tomar it has two stories above and two stories below the ground overhanging a sandstone cliff this uh, gigantic cliff is punctured by five massive round towers ground by the domed cupolas and linked by delicate carved pa- parapets so this is the man mandir so idhu vandu rendu floor mana irukku rendu floor keela irukku and the parapets and everything is carved in a sense it is it is somewhat hanging and it gives a you know kind of security feature or chinna hole and from there they can attack that kind of thing so in our rajput architecture next thing is jaipur jaipur was built by jay singh represent the synthesis of rajput and mughal architecture the city is enclosed by wall and has a bastions and towers at regular intervals the city once again the city is enclosed by walls so you can see think one thing uh, one thing is commonly running through all the rajput architecture that is every city or every fort they construct as a wall enclosing them so mostly the security was completely inbuilt into this their architecture prominent structures of jaipur hawa mahal so has a five storied symmetrical facade opposite of 953 small cascasement in a huge curve each with a projecting balconies and crowning arch so this is hawa mahal so five stories or projecting view uh, view balcony kind of thing but it is not a balcony so from there you can view it is five stories so you can imagine how it was structurally built So, this is a modern idea of the infuse in the structure. Right? So, if you look at five structures, you can see that it's a punch mughal built by Akbar. But, this is the idea that there is a lot of more useful spaces. Okay? That was open terrace kind of idea. Right? So, next is Jantar Mandir. The largest of the five observatories built by Jai Singh too in the early 18th century. Others being Ujjain, Mathura, Varanasi in Delhi. So, there are five ancient or the old observatories in India of which one is Jantar Mandir. So, this is Jantar Mandir. It is an important observatory, guys, with regard to astronomical importance. A lot of you know, great things were discovered over here. And uh, astronomically, the modern building is somewhat different from the other uh, places. So, you can model it the world over. But at that point of time, when medieval was itself happening, so, the British is not the modern time. The British is uh, imagining, uh, just remember that. 
this was during the time of medieval so nammude medieval la avangala medieval kind of early so adanalle and the time la astronomical importance vandu chu but in india it was very new and one of the important astronomical sites all over okay so this is jantar mandir and this is one of the sundial the world's largest sundial இது பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்த ரைசிங் பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்த மாதிரி ரைசிங் உள்ள ஒண்ணு இருக்கும் அதுல வர்றது தான் இந்த சண்டேல் இது ஃப்ரம் தட் சண்டேல் டிப் ஆல்சோ கேன் ஹேவ் லுக் சோ இந்த ஷார்ப் அலைன்மென்ட் ஆல்சோ வர்க்ஸ் அஸ் சண்டேல் பட் ஸ்டில் அந்த டாப் இதுல போய் அப்சர்வேஷன் டக்கா வர்க்கும் சண்டேல்னா என்ன ஒரு ஒரு ட்ரையாங்குலர் காம்பவுண்ட் மாதிரி இருக்கும் தட் will வித் தட் will மூவ் தட் ஷேடோஸ் will மூவ் வித் ரிகார்ட் டு தி சன் அண்ட் தட் ஷேடோ will be pointed to some time in the ground so in the அந்த ஒரு ஒரு ட்ரையாங்குலர் காம்பவுண்ட் இருக்கு பாத்தீங்களா அதுதான் இது இட் இஸ் மேட் லைக் a wall okay so this is other sundial that is placed in jantar mandir okay fine uh, <coughs> with this we'll close for today in the next class we'll go for avadi architecture and other uh, you know other areas of indo islamic architecture so indo islamic architecture is finally at the end or the medieval architecture is finally at the end so our indo islamic architecture we will finish to non indo islamic architecture la namu vandu the rajputs avadi la paathiru in the next class we will start with uh, modern architecture So, architecture is the next one, the paintings, and then finally we'll go to music, dance, and other factors. So, guys, once again, I'm saying you, if the subject is bulk of it, you can see the slides, you can see the presentations, and do have a look at the photos. Now, the photos are browsed. I cannot show all of the photos. You have to have a look and search for it. Only then you can remember the subject properly. Okay? Fine. If there is any doubts with regard to the subject, please put it in the comments. If there is no doubt, uh, uh, try to ask me questions. Of course, I would have missed certain topics also. Because this is a very huge subject. Architecture and art and architecture are a very big subject. I cannot cover everything. I may have missed unknowingly certain areas. If there is something like that, please put it up in the comments also. Okay, guys? Fine. With this, we will close for today. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.